Harry Gurney claimed the first hat-trick of his first-class career to help put Nottinghamshire in charge of their LV County Championship match with leaders Sussex with a day of the game to go at the Brighton ground. With the second new ball due after one over of day three, this game was really nicely balanced even after Chris Jordan was run out to the fourth ball of the morning, Luke Fletcher stretching his stomach muscles to complete the dismissal. So Sussex were on 291 for seven, 65 runs behind when the new ball was taken. Ben Brown and Steve McGoffin took the total to 306, only for Gurney to then take over. After Ben Brown had guided a wide ball into the hands of Samit Patel, James Anion edged the next delivery to Stephen Mullaney. Now only Monty Panasar stood between the left armour and the first hat-trick by a Knotts player since Charlie Shrek got one in 2006 and the bowler won as Patel clung on again to start the wild and fully deserved celebrations. Sussex had lost their last four wickets in the first 20 minutes of the day to be dismissed for 306. But the wickets kept on coming. Alex Hales was the third man in quick succession to go for a golden duck as he turned a leg stump ball straight to Luke Wright. And when Michael Lunn was also out 10 overs later, brilliantly held by Brown off Steve McGoffin again, Nottinghamshire were on 24 for 2 for a lead of 74. That gave McGoffin his 32nd championship wicket of the season, putting him on top of the charts with Alan Richardson, and he was within a whisker of claiming his 33rd as Ed Cowan was beaten by a beauty. The morning had, somewhat surprisingly, belonged wholeheartedly to the bowlers on what has been an excellent four-day pitch, which has given both batsmen and bowlers a chance. Cowan and James Taylor now saw off the new ball and steadily started to put their side into the box seat either side of the lunch break, with some bright and intelligent cricket being played from both sides throughout. Jordan was not able to have the success he managed in the first innings and Taylor pulled him for a six after the interval. A result later matched by Cowan off the top edge off McGoffin, a maximum which carried the Australian to his third 50 of the championship summer. This one had come off a patient 121 balls, with six fours also being struck within. After the difficulties against the new ball, this had been a very impressive knock indeed. Taylor was also very good, passing another 50 off 95 balls. After a difficult first season at Notts, he's showing why he played test cricket for England last year. While he's fallen behind the likes of Joe Root and Johnny Bairstow, there is no doubting Taylor's talents, which were being shown off here along with Cowan's. The Australian will be hoping to make a big impact in this summer's Ashes, but for now all his efforts were on getting his side well ahead in this superb contest, one between two very good championship sides who should be there or thereabouts come the end of the season. Having scored 100 on his championship debut for Gloucestershire last summer, Cowan will have been disappointed that he hasn't as yet reached three figures for knots. He was caught in two minds to be bowled by Chris Nash for 81 here, just before T. He was out after a stand of 151 in 45 overs with Taylor, a partnership which had now put their side into a strong position, a position made even stronger by Taylor, who was now closing in on his second hundred of the championship season. He was denied that by Jordan, or rather a rare fault shot off the bowler, the ball was there to be hit to the boundary for the runs Taylor needed for his ton, but he could only offer Brown a catch instead to go for 97. Patel, whose brilliant 157 in the first innings had set this game up for his team, now tried to pick up where Taylor had left off by hammering Nash for a six. But he then went in a similar way to Taylor before him, Brown cleaning up behind the stumps again as Patel was out for 18 this time. Jordan then made it three in this spell to once more overhaul McGoffin in the wicket-taking stakes. Stephen Maylaney, his 34th victim of the season, as he could only fend off a short and fast ball to Luke Wells after making five. Panasar then trapped Chris Reid in front on ten with his quicker ball to reduce Knotts to 239 for seven, their lead not quite enough yet on 289. So the innings of Paul Franks for the second time in this match was an important one. His 36th first time around had taken his side from a position of peril to one of strength in partnership with Patel and as he went about his business in a professional manner as always, he was able to again put his team where they wanted to be, sharing in an 8th wicket stand of 49 with Ajmel Shazad, who contributed just three of those. McGoffin then matched Jordan's efforts again by first bowling Shazad and then having Fletcher held next ball by Ed Joyce. 
There was no hat-trick from the Australian as Franks and Gurney saw out the last 12 balls of the day. Franks recording a 50 off only 54 balls before the close with his 10th boundary. He's had a very good match to date. And it's one which is not over yet. With a day to go, Knotts have a lead of 354, having made 304 for nine. A kind of par score for this pitch, it seems. Perhaps the declaration will be made overnight, which will give Sussex 96 overs to try to chase down 355, or the same time for the visitors to get 10 wickets for a very good win, which will put them right back in the title mix, along with their opponents.